FA Cup success for Ipswich Town at Portman Road through to the fourth round for the first time in 13 years, Stuart Watson. We haven't watched much good FA Cup football together here at Portman Road, have we? But we have now. I've covered this football club since 2011 and I've never seen Ipswich Town win an FA Cup third round tie until now, the first time since they beat Blackpool away way back in 2010. Um, not only have we had an FA Cup win, we've had two penalties. We've had a prospective signing sitting in the director's box. It's been a, it's been a good day. Plymouth dropped points as well. Um, all in all, very good afternoon's work. Yeah, Rotherham beaten 4-1, championship opposition dispatched. And we think that's the first time Town have knocked a team from higher up the pyramid out of the FA Cup since reigning Premier League champions Blackburn in 1995-96. So, um, in its own little way, a bit of history this afternoon. And they were really good value for it as well, weren't they? Really good value for it. I thought um, first half they completely dominated, push, 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 lots of the ball, but a lot more cutting edge about them today. They played high up the pitch. The tempo both on and off the ball was really good. And that, that goal, really good goal from Cameron Humphreys uh, right at the end of the first half was coming. Slick move, coolly finished off, side footed finish into the bottom corner. Um, and then they just switched off momentarily at the start of the second half. Long ball over the top. Uh, Connor Washington gets the wrong side and Richard Keogh had to make a bit of a desperate lunge. Washington rolls home the penalty. And bar a you know, little bit of a wobble after that where you thought this, this game could change, Ipswich just got right back on it. And, and it felt like they were going to get back in front. They did get back in front when Connor Chaplin converted from the spot. Foul on Freddie Ledapo. And from there, they uh, they rather enjoyed themselves against Rotherham. Goals three and four came. Yeah, another one from the penalty spot, and um, in the end, that was that was a really comprehensive win against a Championship yeah. side. Yeah, I really like this Ipswich team, and they I feel they're they're at their best when they make those fast starts, and and they did that today. Um, Lee Evans had his foot going through every ball going in the middle of midfield to try and win balls back. So Shawnee Aluko, just like he did at Lincoln on Monday, getting on the ball, trying to make things happen. Caden Jackson on the right flank, I'm beginning to really quite quite like that as a different second option to Wes Burns. And it felt like at times, and, and this, this has happened previously, they, they make him the focal point of the attack. They try and use him. Um, that was the route to goal for the first goal. Um, the crossing isn't always perfect from that flank, but it, it was this time. And um, they've set, they set themselves a tempo. And bar the little wobble you mentioned, they stuck to it. And that was that was the pleasing thing for me, um, as well as the fact they've put a team together today that that, that configuration of Ipswich Town won't have played together before and um, you wouldn't have known. Well, that was eight changes to Ipswich's starting 11 that drew at Lincoln on Monday. Rotherham was only one change from their last league lineup. Um, so you'd have to say that was a more full-strength Rotherham side than it was an Ipswich side. So for... For, a, for an Ipswich side full of fringe players to beat Rotherham so convincingly t today, I think is a really good sign. Kieran McKenna, both pre-match and post-match, was, was keen to stress that he doesn't read too much into this in terms of how well-equipped this Ipswich Town team slash squad would be for championship football if they were to go up this season. Um, but... That's really encouraging. We talk about whether this brand of football that they've got is is got a higher ceiling, it is potentially better uh, better suited to playing teams that would have to go at them a little bit more. Um, and today is, is perhaps a sign that all those things are true. Kieran McKenna might not want to read too much into it, but we, but we can if we want. Yeah. We sat in the same seat as Kieran McKenna was about half an hour ago. Um, but we can read a bit more into it if we want to. Um, I think you probably have to say that this is a Rotherham team whose tails are not up. Whenever Ipswich have run into Rotherham in League mm. One, they've been soundly beaten, really, arm's length from Rotherham. But those were promotion-chasing Rotherham teams. This is a Rotherham team that, that's looking a bit down on its luck and is in another relegation battle, isn't it? But you can only beat what you put in front of you, and they did that comprehensively. Um, and... I think you probably can put it down as a, as a mark of some progress, um, all those factors considered. Yeah, do you want to talk about a few individuals? Uh, maybe we'll, t we'll take it in turns. Um, Cameron Humphreys, we've mentioned, who took his goal very well, uh, made, made a difficult finish look really easy, the way he just sort of side-footed that into the bottom corner on the run. That was a really slick move. 
Um, Caden Jackson winning the ball back, nice little one-two with Freddie Ladapo pulled back into to the area. Really enjoyed that goal. Um, but it was his second half performance that Kieran McKenna really highlighted afterwards, particularly after the equaliser went in. Um, he said that the 19-year-old was the one that was clapping and cajoling his teammates, was wanting the ball in difficult areas, was driving the team up the pitch, box-to-box -box performance. Not only was his performance very mature today, his post-match press conference, you would never think he was a 19-year-old. He looked like a seasoned professional, didn't he? Um, just adds to this feeling that Ipswich have got a really special player on their hands yeah. here, isn't it? Yeah, they have. I think uh, he, he'll be looked after very carefully, um, but I don't think they'd have wanted him to have played as much football as he has to this point. But he will always look back on November and December of, of 2022 as a really special time in his, his career because it will serve him incredibly well. Um, that, that's Humphreys. Uh, another player to pick out will be Freddie Ladapo, who went into this game... Um, with all the motivation in the world. Um, I don't know if he knew if that George Hurst was sitting in the stands watching that, that game today, but he certainly would have known that, that Tam were after a new striker to compete with him and push him further. And he was playing against his former club and he had a really good afternoon, didn't he? Back to goal stuff, neat flicks, um, won the penalty for Chaplin's goal and, and the, the composure that he showed to skip round Johansson in the Rotherham goal and finish really nicely after that was great. Um, a really, really good finish, a really good performance at the perfect moment for him. Yeah, it's, it's a tough role him for him playing as the lone striker in this system. It's a bit of a thankless task at times. Um, but I, he just he just ran and ran, and I thought he, he pressed high, he led the one-man press, some nice little link-up play, strong with his back to goal. He looked like a man who was fired up for that today, and rightly so. Mm. So um, I think I think that bodes well to... We, we think, and we'll come on to this in a minute, that there are strikers or forwards, uh, a couple of, yep. close to signing. Um, but to think, to hope that they're going to hit the ground running straight away is maybe a big ask. So to have Ladapo kind of getting an extra few percent out of him while, while some competition is coming. I think that's, that bodes really well, hopefully, for these for these next couple oh, big, of games. Big time. I, uh, we'll talk about George Hurst a bit more in a minute. Um, but I really hope Freddie Ladapo starting the Plymouth game next weekend. Um, it's, he's not always had back-to-back -back starts after good performances, but I, I really hope he gets that opportunity next weekend because he'll be as fired up for that game as he is as, as he was for this Um Hopefully he can do it back to back. Should yeah. we talk about some potential ins? Okay, go for it. Yeah, we've you mentioned it already. George Hurst uh, in the director's box today, watching Ipswich Town. Uh, he was a he was a major target back in the summer. Ipswich couldn't get him. He ended up going on loan to Blackburn. Game time has been short for him in the Championship. Recalled by Leicester. Um, Ipswich are clearly well down the line and by the time you watch this video that may even have been announced we're recording this sort of post post match may even get announced tonight yeah. McKenna was very keen to stress that nothing is done yet at the moment does the respectful thing that managers do about talking about other clubs players but you would imagine that is likely given that he was at the game today yeah you'd, you'd think so um, I, I think I think the interest was always likely to carry over into January. As you say, as we're talking right now, I think he's probably publicly anyway still on loan at Blackburn. Um, that's clearly not going to go on for an awful lot longer. Um, he was here today. Um, and then the, the other one is Nathan Broadhead, Stu, this morning. You, you, you wrote a story this morning um, about a player we knew town were interested in, Nathan Broadhead, but that seemingly has moved on another step, possibly even two. Um, and he could be a, a second one through the door too. Yeah, some... Rumours that he also was at the game today, we can't confirm those. We certainly haven't got photographic evidence of it, but my understanding is a seven-figure fee has been agreed with Everton for him. His loan deal from Wigan has been officially ended. So Broadhead played a big role in firing Sunderland to League One promotion last season. George Hurst scored 15 goals for Portsmouth, a League One club last season. So Ipswich will be getting themselves two young proven forwards at this level um, that is going to get the rest of this division sitting up and taking notice isn't it it certainly is I think I think as well if you um, if these deals are done in the, in um, in Hurst's case possibly even today Broadhead may be a little longer I think this counts as early January business doesn't it and if you've, you've done that coupled with Massimo Luongo who we didn't actually see from the bench um, today perhaps a little bit surprisingly he, he was an unused, unused substitute that's three in the door um, 
early in the window. Um, Ipswich need the, the reinforcements to come at an important time, don't they? Um, no time to waste in what they're trying to achieve. So in terms of Broadhead, um, he's a player I really like. I've got quite high hopes mm. for, for him. Um, Hurst, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him. They clearly see something really, really good in him. I've got, well, I don't think we've seen... I've not seen anywhere near enough to comment on mm. on what he what he um, what he might bring, but um, looking forward to seeing it, seeing because they've clearly liked this this player for quite some time. Yeah, a good day at the office, and I think an important one after a few little, maybe a few doubts, understandably crept into people's minds off off the back of the Portsmouth and the Lincoln draws and some of the frustration over Christmas. Today is a really timely uh, morale boost ahead of a huge game against Plymouth here at Portman Road next weekend. We'll see you then.